what's going on savages in this video i'm going to be comparing the top six body fat scales that i can find on amazon and i'm going to be comparing them for accuracy with the dexa scan which is pretty much considered the gold standard of measuring body fat the dexa scan is not the golden standard if you wanted to get the gold standard in body fat testing you'd go to greg Doucette on cameo and book him for 250 dollars I'm also gonna be ranking all of these scales across four metrics you'll see on the screen right here. Cause it's not just about how accurate the scale is. Of course, that's very important, but it's also about how it looks, the overall user experience. As far as the results that I got from the DEXA scan, I have myself at 23.1% body fat at 10 months postpartum. Seven months ago, I was put the results on the screen. So in just seven months time, I was able to lose eight percentage points in body fat and gain one pound of lean body mass, which I feel is really good for somebody whose recovery has been absolute trash. Like you guys, I have two kids trained under, I'm not getting the best sleep in that circumstance building muscle back is a lot harder. Also was able to increase my uh, resting metabolic rate. I don't know if you guys remember from my last video, I was at a resting metabolic rate of 1100 calories a day and change, and I bumped that up to being in the fast zone. So I wanted to let you guys know that I'm opening up another cohort for my new coaching program, which is specifically reserved for busy executives, professionals, business owners, and CEOs that are really trying to figure out how to find balance in their health journey and need to get results. The January program sold out in two days. This is like the product that I wish I had when I was growing my career. So if you're somebody that identifies as one of those people and you genuinely want to change your life for the better, I highly recommend you sign up for a diagnostic call. Let's get into the scales and figure out which one is gonna be the best scale for the money. Okay, first comparison is the Withing scale. 23%, you got it real quick. So I'm at a 23% body fat on the withings. That's actually pretty good. Here's what I would rank them at overall. Um, body fat accuracy, really accurate. 23.1, this had me at 23% body fat. The user experience is pretty smooth. I got the scale, I think it was like at $89, which was a deal at the time. I don't think you really need to go up to the higher end scales on withings unless you want additional features. But for me, the only thing I'm really focused on is body fat and lean mass. Now before before we go on to the next scale, it's important to mention how do these scales actually work and are any of them going to be super accurate when it comes to measuring your body fat? Well, the short answer is it depends. There was a study done that compared successful dieters to non-successful dieters, dieters who ultimately gain the weight back. And what they found is that the successful dieters ultimately engage in at least one form of self-monitoring and weighing yourself every day is a great measure of that. Oftentimes people can get really frustrated with the scale by looking at their weight fluctuations day to day. But but if you keep an eye on your body fat changes and your lean body mass changes week to week, you're much less likely to get frustrated in the little tiny fluctuations of your weight. Now you might be thinking, how do these scales actually work? And what is it that makes some of these scales more accurate than others? All these scales use something called bioelectrical impedance, which sends a small painless electrical signal through your body. The current typically goes in one foot up through the pelvis and out the other. So if you're carrying a lot of fat in your belly, the electrical impulse might miss that. The signal that it sends passes passes more easily through water and lean tissue like muscle than it does through fat. So by measuring how long it takes for the impulse to go from one foot through the other, the scale can estimate your body fat and lean mass basically on your legs and glutes. Notice that these scales tend to be most accurate for people that distribute their body fat evenly. Every scale is gonna have its own algorithm to predict these things based on the electrical resistance. The most accurate scales are of course gonna have the most researched algorithms and then the least accurate scales are probably not taking into account that much data. The measurements can definitely be more off if you are retaining a lot of water that day or if you're super dehydrated. So it's best to take these measurements first thing in the morning after you eliminate. I had one of my clients take a DEXA scan at the beginning of working with me and at the eight week mark, another DEXA scan. And during that eight week period of time, she gained three pounds of muscle and lost three percentage points in body fat, but the Withing scale didn't really show any difference. So at the end of the day, I would take the readings that you're getting from your smart scale with a grain of salt. And this video is gonna show you which scales are definitely not accurate, but I would think of these tools more as like a self monitoring tool. So for example, weighing yourself every day to see major fluctuations and to make sure that you're holding yourself accountable to uh, maintain 
maintaining a good diet, not going crazy, and continuing your exercise regimen. All right, let's get into the next scale. Okay, next up is the GE body fat scale right here. I'll put a little picture to it on Amazon. Let's try it out. Okay, so it's thinking 23.4% is what it has me at right here. The GE one has an application too, which I think is pretty smooth. One thing I don't like about this scale is that it's not battery operated. You have to charge it. And when I think about like my lifestyle and just remembering to charge my iPhone and my AirPods and my Apple Watch, I don't know if I can like have the mental capacity to plug in one more thing. Whereas batteries, usually like your scale batteries won't run out for like two years. And then you have this one minor inconvenience convenience, whereas like charging something maybe once a month or more than that, that's a lot of work. I can't do that. So I would say that's a huge knockoff for the GE scale. The app seems to be pretty nice. The accuracy is pretty good. So here's what I give overall for the GE scale. This is what it looks like. Ooh, they figured it out. It comes with batteries. Good job. Okay, I gotta download another app. Let's see. Another important note about these body fat scales is that you definitely don't want to measure yourself on a rug or a carpet. You wanna make sure that you're measuring yourself on a wood floor. A lot of these scales make you put in your birth date, uh, your height, uh, your current weight. And then some of these scales have something called an athlete mode. I don't know if you can see that right there. I'm just gonna put it on athlete mode. Okay. Ooh, I like this scale the most. It says my body fat is 16.8%. That's nice. What happens if I change it off of athlete mode? Okay, I'm gonna try it again without athlete mode and see if it gives me a different answer. This one gave me a body fat of 23.5, just like the GE scale. So I think that the body uh, taking it off of athlete mode is gonna give just like the average person a more accurate measure. So here's the rating that I would give the electricity scale, uh, the body fat percentage, is pretty close, but the user experience is kind of like meh, like I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do. Aesthetically speaking, it's not particularly cute and that's important to me. The next scale we're gonna look at is the top make upgraded body fat scale. Now this one has only 162 ratings, but it is $20. So could either blow my mind or be a complete piece of crap. Let's find out. Not the best packaging situation. Kind of a pain in the ass to open. Definitely not an Apple experience, if you know what I mean. Yeah. But it's kind of a workout opening it. This is horrible, horrible packaging. This is like basically what it looks like when I wrap a Christmas gift. Oh, they don't put the batteries in there for you, but nice touch. They put the batteries in the packet and then they give you also a tape measure. So you can measure like your waist and your glute gains. You know what I'm saying? Guys, why are you making me put the batteries inside? It's like a lot of work. I'm already doing a lot on my fitness journey. You're making me input batteries. Come on. Come on, guys. But maybe that's why you're less than $20. Oh, I gotta download another app. Top make scale. Let's give it a shot. Oh, it's measuring in me in kilograms. I don't want kilograms. It's taking forever to pair. It says my bone mass is insufficient. It gives me something called a muscle rate. It also puts my fat mass on alert. It puts my skeletal muscle rate at slightly slightly low, so you can see those right there. So for $20, I would skip this one probably. Here's the ratings that I would give it. Let's try it one more time. Maybe it was just like calibrating. Nope, nope, the scale's still telling me that's telling me that I'm really unhealthy and that I have a lot of fat and my skeletal muscle is too low. I'd skip the $20 top make. Okay, the next scale we've got is the Renfo. This is what it looks like. This one's got 20,000 reviews on Amazon and a 4.6 star rating, so pretty good. It's got that kind of packaging that's like hard to open unless you have like skizzers, and luckily I do. Okay, the bad news is that this scale doesn't come with any extra batteries, but we can just take that out of the scale. It doesn't really show me where to get this app. So that's kind of confusing. Like there's no QR code to scan and everything makes me create an account. One thing about this scale, the Renfo that I like is that it is pretty petite, but if you have big feet, I feel like you're not gonna be able to get on it accurately. So this one got a body fat of 16.9%. I like that. So being seven percentage points off, I mean, not great. It's gonna tell me that I'm doing, killing it when I'm probably not. Here's the rating that I would give for Renfo. Okay, next one 
one is this VitaFit Smart Bathroom Scale. It's got 2K reviews at 4.6 and also another app that I need to download. So let's check this out. Here's the little mess I've created so far in my office. Pretty fun. Okay, the VitaFit Scale, like the packaging, a lot easier to open than the other one. Definitely more aesthetic than these black scales. I don't know about you, but I need something aesthetic in my bathroom. I like the fact that they give you the batteries so we don't have to deal with installing batteries. Okay, let's try it out. All these scales have me at different weights and this scale had me at like a pound less than all the other ones, which is kind of fun. So in this scale, we got 25 percentage body fat, body water, blah, blah, blah. It gives you all these other metrics here. You can take a look at the metrics that it gives you. 25 percent, not particularly accurate. As far as this scale goes, I would rank it like this. I'd probably pass on this one. So here's all the ratings I'd give for all the scales that we tried so far on the screen. Again, Withings comes in in first place. The aesthetics were great. The user experience is amazing. The app's pretty good and the accuracy is pretty on par. I would say for like 89 to $100, that is a pretty good scale to invest in, given that the DEXA scan is like $120 per scan. Now, do I still think the DEXA scan is really great if you're somebody that's very serious about your health? Yes, I think it's wonderful. I see nothing wrong with getting maybe maybe one to two scans a year to make sure that you're going in the right direction. It also has this great measure called your T-score. And this is especially important for women because it is a measure of your bone density. Now mine, you can see right here is at kind of not that great, but that's typically expected when you're a breastfeeding mama. So I imagine that as soon as I stop breastfeeding, that metric's gonna improve because it did with the last pregnancy for me. Let me know if you guys have any questions and if nothing else, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.